start the discussion of the anti-neoplastic drugs. Now, if you take the terminology that is neoplasia, right? If you take the terminology that is neoplasia. Neoplasia is that particular clinical condition which is characterized by abnormal cellular proliferation, right? Which is characterized by abnormal cellular proliferation. Next. Now, you take this neoplastic cells, right? Neoplastic cells. So, if you take this neoplastic cells, remember, they are almost quite similar to that of normal cells, right? They are similar to the normal cells. In the sense, they have the cytoplasm and as well as the nucleus as well. So, because the neoplastic cells, right, they are almost similar to that of the normal cells. You remember a point here, anti-neoplastic drugs, right? The anti-neoplastic drugs, whatever you are giving, they not only kill the neoplastic cells, these anti-neoplastic drugs, they may also kill even the normal cells, all right? So, remember, anti-neoplastic drugs, right? A and D stands for anti-neoplastic drugs. They are targeted, right? They are targeted to kill the neoplastic cells, right? They are targeted to kill the neoplastic cells. And not only the anti-neoplastic drugs kill the neoplastic cells, they also kill, right? They also kill the normal cells, right? They also kill the normal cells. Now, let me tell you another very important point here. As most of these drugs are acting on the rapidly dividing cells, the normal cells having quick turnover are more susceptible to the toxicity. So, if you take this anti-neoplastic cells, I'm sorry, anti-neoplastic drugs, they are mainly targeting or they are mainly acting on the rapidly dividing cells. Right? They are mainly acting on the rapidly dividing cells. Now, you see a point here. You take your neoplastic cells. Neoplastic cells are the one which are rapidly dividing cells. And these neoplastic cells, they undergo neoplasia, which is nothing but abnormal cellular proliferation. And what is the extent of this abnormal cellular proliferation? It is nothing but your rapidly dividing cells. Right? It is nothing but your rapidly dividing cells. Is that clear? Now, now you take the other point. You see here, as the anti-neoplastic drugs, they are acting on rapidly dividing cells. These anti-neoplastic cells, they may act even on the normal cells as well. Right? They may act even on the normal cells having quick turnover. Right? Having quick turnover. Okay? Now, so whenever these anti-neoplastic cells are anti-neoplastic drugs are acting on the normal cells having a quick turnover these normal cells they are also most susceptible to the toxicity right they are also most susceptible to the toxicity so remember the normal cells having quick turnover are more susceptible to the toxicity now let me tell you what are the adverse effects associated with the anti-neoplastic drugs the most common adverse effects, right? The most common adverse effects associated with this particular anti-neoplastic drugs are, they include bone marrow suppression, right? They include alopecia, where there is loss of hair. And apart from alopecia, there is also mucositis, right? There is also mucositis. So, mucositis is what? Where there is an inflammation of the mucosa. So, these are the common adverse effects associated with the anti-neoplastic drugs. Next. Now, there are certain new drugs. New drugs targeting the specific steps in the cells are devoid of these particular adverse effects. Okay. So, now you take the new drugs. New drugs which are targeting the specific steps in the cells are devoid of the adverse effects. I'll tell you what are those new drugs. 
right they are devoid of this particular adverse effects next now you take this anti-cancer drugs anti-cancer drugs remember they may be divided into two groups right they may be divided into two groups now how are they divided into two groups remember anti-cancer drugs may be divided into two groups on the basis of stage of cell cycle at which these act right anti-cancer drugs may be divided into two groups on the basis of stage of the cell cycle at which these anti-cancer drugs they act now you take these anti-cancer drugs anti-cancer drugs they may be divided into cell cycle specific and cell cycle non-specific right they divide into cell cycle specific and they are divided into cell cycle non-specific okay so if you take this anti-cancer drugs right they are broadly classified into two groups right they are broadly classified into two groups right what is the basis for that on the basis of the stage of cell cycle at which they act on the basis of stage of right on the basis of the stage of cell cycle at which these act and now what are these two groups right remember these two groups they include cell cycle specific right cell cycle specific and the other one is cell cycle non-specific right cell cycle specific and as well as the cell cycle non-specific so these are how the anti-cancer drugs are being divided into two groups that is cell cycle specific and cell cycle non-specific now i will tell you what do you mean by the word cell cycle specific and what do you mean by the word cell cycle non-specific now let me tell you what do you mean by cell cycle right cell cycle specific drugs now if you take the cell cycle specific drugs these are the drugs which are effective when the cells are proliferating right these are the drugs which are effective right when the cells are proliferating right this is what is called as the cell cycle specific whereas you take the other group of drugs that is cell cycle right cell cycle non-specific now what do you mean by this cell cycle non-specific drugs are remember cell cycle non-specific drugs they are effective whether the cell is dividing or when the cell is in the resting phase whereas you take cell cycle specific when only when the cells are proliferating the cell cycle specific are useful whereas cell cycle non-specific drugs they are effective when the cell is dividing right when the cell is dividing and as well as when the cell is in the resting phase right as well as when the cell is in the resting phase now now before going into the discussion of the anti-neoplastic drugs let me tell you the phases of the cell cycle right so phases of the cell cycle now if you take the phases of the cell cycle now why am i discussing the phases of the cell cycle is because certain group of drugs they act during that particular phase of the cell cycle now if you take the phases of the cell cycle they include g0 g1 then you have the s phase then you have g2 and then you have mitosis right then you have mitosis now what do you mean by the word g0 g0 is the phase where the cell it takes rest right the cell rests during the g0 phase of the cell cycle now you take in g1 right you take in g1 in g1 phase of the cell cycle remember there is duplication of the cellular contents right there is duplication of cellular contents that is your g1 phase it is only the duplication of the cellular cytoplasmic contents all right and here in g1 phase the nuclear contents will not duplicate right in the g1 phase the nuclear contents will not duplicate it is only the cellular cytoplasmic contents which will duplicate whereas you take the s phase so whereas you take in the s phase right whereas you take in the s phase remember in the s phase each of right each of 46 chromosomes 
right each of 46 chromosomes they are duplicated right each of the 46 chromosomes are duplicated during the s phase of the cell cycle whereas in g1 phase it is the duplication of the cellular contents except chromosomes now you take in g2 phase what will happen in the g2 phase of the cell cycle is the cell it double checks right it double checks so what it will try to do is in the g2 phase the cell will see if there is any error of the duplicated chromosomes if there is any error of the duplicated chromosome in the g2 phase there will be repair of that particular error right in the g2 phase there will be repair of that particular error next next you have the phase of the mitosis the mitosis phase is the phase where the cell will duplicate into 2 4 8 and 16 and further okay now if you take in case of the mitosis we have the following phases now you take the phases in the mitosis the phases in the mitosis they include prophase they include pro metaphase right pro metaphase and then you have metaphase and then you have anaphase and then you have telophase right and then you have telophase so these are the phases in the mitosis where the cell will duplicate into multiple number of cells so in neoplastic cells what is happening there is abnormal proliferation of the cell right there is rapidly abnormal proliferation of the neoplastic cells so that is what is nothing but your neoplasia now all your anti neoplastic drugs right what they try to do they will try to suppress right they will try to suppress this abnormal proliferation by acting at different phases of the cell cycle now let me discuss what are those various anti neoplastic drugs which acts on the various phases of the cell cycle now let me tell you what are those group of drugs which are acting on the various phases of the cell cycle so we have classified the uh, anti neoplastic drugs into cell cycle specific drugs which act only on the proliferating cells whereas cell cycle non specific drugs cell cycle non specific drugs are those group of drugs which are acting on the cells which are resting and as well as proliferating now now let me tell you what are those group of drugs which act on g1 s phase right g1 stands for gap 1 phase and S phase is the place is the phase during which the chromosomes they start multiplicating or duplicating now you take the cell cycle specific drugs the one which act on G1 S phase so the drug is etoposide now if you take the cell cycle non-specific drugs which are acting on G1 S phase they include the platinum compounds right they include the platinum compounds now you take the drugs which act on the S phase of the cell cycle. If you take the cell specific drugs, they include like anti-metabolites, right? They include like anti-metabolites. And whereas you take the cell cycle non-specific drugs which are acting on the S phase, they include alkylating agents, right? They include the alkylating agents. Next, you take on the G2M phase, right? You take on the G2M phase. Now, if you take on the G2M phase, if you take the cell cycle specific drugs, they include bleomycin, right? They include bleomycin and the other drug what we have is etoposide, right? The other drug what we have is the etoposide. Now, you take the cell cycle non-specific drugs which are acting on the G2M phase, they include anthracyclines, right? They include the anthracyclines and the other drug is dactinomycin right the other drug is dactinomycin next you take the drugs which are acting on the m phase right if you take the cell cycle specific drugs they include vinca alkaloids right they include the vinca alkaloids then you have the other group of drugs called as taxanes which are acting on the m phase and they are cell cycle specific drugs and then we have what is called as estramustin right extra mustin next you take the cell cycle non-specific drugs which are acting on the m phase like one is your mitomycin right all right one is your mitomycin and the other cell cycle non-specific drug acting in the m phase is your camptothesins 
right the other group of drugs is camptothecins now we have one more drug in the cell cycle specific which act on the m phase that is nothing but ixabipilone right ixabipilone so this is the group of drugs which are acting on the cell cycle specific and their respective phases and you take the cell cycle non specific these are the various drugs acting on the various phases right so now let me discuss the classification of the antineoplastic drugs